Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. How are you all? So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, fixed width. Fixed width is the most commonly used file format in uh, HR world because it is easy to understand the data for human beings. For missions, let's just say, you know, any mission, XML or JSON or any kind of file format, doesn't matter, it can be recognized. But for human beings, the fixed width is the most easy to understand, easy to relate, and easy to compare. Even if you have two files to compare, it's easy to uh, you know compare. That's the reason why a, a fixed width is commonly used even today, right? So uh, let's let's talk a little bit more into the fixed width, how to create a fixed width using XSLD. Okay, let's get started. So this is the article for the video. I'll give. Uh, URL for this video in the video description. So uh, I'm going to cover four examples for the fixed width in this video. Okay. So let's start with the very basic example. First, I'll show you the output. First, I'll show you the XML input, right? We have employee ID and then, uh, you know, some other information like name and company and all. And then we want to show the this this data in the fixed width output format so let's just say employee ID we want to use until 12 you know length of 12 characters and the name of 25 then companies let's just say 15 characters and if anything more than that we are going to truncate it we really don't care okay so um how can we do that how can we realize that in the xslt is a question so this is a very basic XSLT for this. Uh, when I have very initially created, this is how I have created. And eventually I have learned better and sophisticated ways, which I'm going to cover in the next examples. But let's just start with the very basic thing, right? So here, uh, this is a fixed constant, right? Uh, kind of hard coding. So I've given until 12 characters and then this is 25 characters and this is 15 characters. But the data itself, how I want to uh, fetch is, first of all, I'm going um, uh, employee ID and then I'm concatenating employee ID, whatever the data, with this many number of uh, spaces, okay? So, uh, generally the spaces should be more than uh you know 12 in this case because the employee i want to limit to 12 this should be at least more than 12. that way we um, you know even if you don't have any data in the employee ID, there'll be at least 12 spaces right in this case i have given 35. okay so first of all we are concatenating the employee ID with the spaces and then we are using substring substring 1 to 12. so that is for employee ID. In the similar way for name, we are concatenating with the space, and then we are substring from one to 25. The similar case with the company. So this is a very simple way of achieving a fixed width, okay? Coming to the second one, second example is fixed width with variable. This is the very first time I'm introducing you with a variable concept in XSLD. Uh, variables will be very helpful. We don't want to, we want to define it one place and then we want to change something in the logic. We can just play, you know, play around with the variables and it will be very helpful. Sophisticated, better way of coding, right? In this pre previous example, I have given the spaces here, right? I have replayed this place spaces here and I have given a variable. A variable is represented with a dollar sign and then the text. So if you observe the variable calling, I'm calling the variable with the dot, uh, with the dollar symbol. But when I am declaring it, I'm not giving the dollar symbol. So this is a uh, syntax for the variable, XSL variable and name of the variable. And in this case, I have given uh, so many spaces. Doesn't matter how many spaces, as long as at least it should be, you know, in this case, this is 25 is the maximum, so at least should be 25. And then the similar output. There is no difference in the output because there is no difference in the input. It's just that how we are achieving the 
the result is a little bit different. The third one and fourth one, this is even bit more sophisticated way of um, achieving the things. This is called apply template. One is apply template, one is a call template. Okay, I'll tell you what is the difference between these two eventually, but let's see how we can realize with first apply template. Right, it's the same thing, but the same. Just that if you're familiar with the function concept in uh, any other programming language, this is in a similar way. We don't want to write the logic there, then and there, but we want to send as a parameter, and the logic should be somewhere in a function. If you want to change the logic, one place we are changing, that is, um, that is more sophisticated, right? So if you see here, we have employee ID, name and company and employee should be 12 characters, name should be 25 characters and company is 15 characters, let's just say. Um, what we are doing is we are, uh, we are calling that, first of all, let's see the, the function or let's just say template a definition, right? So we are calling with the parameters and then we are returning something. The returning something, if you observe, whatever the input, uh, right, whatever the input that is coming into the text, right, we are just applying the similar logic, concatenating and then uh, substringing, using the substring with the variables here. This is one variable which is declared right there, and then this is the parameter which we just received every time that function is being called, that is width, dollar width we are using here. So how can we call this template? You know, this is how we call this template, apply templates. And then we are passing with the parameters. The, in this case, the parameter is width of 12. Okay, that's it. The output is still again similar. Now, the call template is, is also in the almost similar way. There are few nuances are there. Uh, we'll look into that in the XSLD. Just that, uh, in this case, we have two parameters, input text and width. And then, um, this the, this logic is same, there's no difference. Just that in this, in this place of text, we're having variable here, input text and width. And how we are calling this is call template. Previously, it was apply templates, now it is call template in the template name. And then, there are two parameters, right? Employee ID and width of that particular uh, character. So we are giving here. So now the obvious question comes, what is the difference between call template and apply template? Is there any significant difference? Uh, uh, you know, if you want to know more about that uh, differences, I have given a link here for a stack overflow. Somebody has clearly explained. Uh, for our context, uh, especially workday context, we don't have to go into that much details, but just to put in uh, simple words, apply template seems to be more sophisticated than call template. Uh, but uh, you know, if you want to go through the more details, you can always go through that. I have given the link here. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, I hope you've learned something today and then you're going to apply this on your day-to-day -day basis and enhance your life. Okay, have a nice day. Bye-bye.